Hello, fifth grade. Happy good morning, afternoon, evening. Uh, today is, uh, this lesson is for March 31st and I hope you're finding yourself well. Um, we are going to go over on uh, page 535 in your textbooks. So if you have that, go ahead and take that out. By the way, baby girl Campos, I don't know if you can see her, but is saying hi to you. <laughs> she sure does miss you. I think she's not used to not having any noise around here, um, especially now that she can hear more. Um, but I know a lot of you always say, are you gonna tell your baby stories about us? Yes, I will. I will um, tell stories about you, Malin, about Kaylin, and all of those uh, fun stories with you, but um, I'm reminiscing on some of those memories um, as, I, as I sit here in the classroom. Um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and begin here on lesson 82. We are going to talk today about grade in, uh, finding greatest common factors in numbers. Now, we have practiced finding uh, the factors of whole numbers. In this lesson, we will, uh, we, will, we will practice finding the greatest common factor of two numbers. Now, real quick with me, uh, just reviewing what factors are. Um, it's not in your lesson here, but I wanted to make sure that you, again, are understanding before we start this lesson. Somebody tell me, the factors of nine. Again, remember, a number always has two, two factors, no matter the number, always has a number one and itself. So if I asked you for the first one here, find the factors of nine, what uh, factors would you say are factors of nine? Meaning, what times what gives you something uh, that equals to nine? Again, the number one and nine always, you can either multiply one times nine or nine times one and that's gonna give you nine. What other factors do you know of nine? So I thought I said one and also nine. And then one more. Okay? Three. Okay, so these are the factors of nine. It's important to know that in order to do today's lesson. Uh, and again, knowing your multiplication tables, knowing your math facts are going to help you tremendously on this. And I'm actually not nervous at all because a lot of the fifth graders are doing a fantastic job. And uh, again, as I think about Y'all, I miss you, but let's go on to the lesson here. Uh, the greatest common factor of two numbers is the largest whole number that is a factor of both numbers. So the letters G, C, F, you're gonna see this now, uh, and actually words like this here, G, C, F. That stands for greatest common factor. So if you see anything in your book today that says G, C, F, what it means is greatest common factor. Again, what is the greatest common factor? The greatest common factor is uh, the greatest factor, the greatest number, uh, of the, or the largest whole number that is a factor of both numbers. Uh, again, uh, to find the greatest common factor, we're going to do an example here of the numbers 8 and 12. Let's look here. The factors of 12 are the following. Again, the number 1 and 12 itself, that automatically gives me two factors. Okay, the number 1 and 12 here, we wrote those down. Then I know that 2 times 6 gives me 12, so 2 is a factor here, so it's 6. 3, 4, and uh, 6 and 12. I won't go through and do that, but I hope that you remember those, that lesson a couple weeks back. Uh, let's look at the factors of 18. Okay, the factors of 18 are 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, and 18. Again, if you don't remember what a factor is, it's numbers that can be multiplied to multiply or add up to, um, to give you 18. Um, now, let's look here. What are factors that both of these numbers have in common? Can you see them? Okay, of course the number one is common factor, so I'm gonna circle these two. Okay, they both have two, right? So we're gonna circle two. They both have three, so we're gonna circle three. Uh, they both have six, and that's all they have in common. Now, the common factors are one, two, three, and six. Those are the four common factors that they have in common. However, the GCF, or in other words, greatest common factor for both of these numbers is the number six. So the GCF for both of these numbers for 12 and six is six. The greatest common factor for 12 and 18 is six. Let's see if we can do example one together. And if you are, if you understand this concept, go ahead and do this one with me. Example one reads the following. Read it with me, will you? Find the greatest common factor, GCF, 
uh, of 8 and 20. Again, I have to list the factors first. List the factors and identify these factors here once I have them listed and circle the common factors. So let's define the factors for 8. Okay, the factors of 8 are number 1. Okay, what's another factor? 2, good. What else? 4, good. And what else? 8, very good. All right, let's look at the factors of 20. The factors of 20. All right, of course, number 1 is always a factor there. Okay, the number 2? Yes, very good. Hey, okay, what else? The number four, very good. Uh, the number five, good. What else? Ten, very good. Ten and twenty. Now let's go through and circle the common factors, the numbers that both of these have in common. You ready? Okay, they have the number one in common, so I'm going to circle both of them. They have the number two in common, they have the number four in common. And it looks like that's it, right, for uh, fifth grade? Yeah. So could somebody tell me by looking at the board, what is the greatest common factor? In other words, known as a GCF. What is it? That's right. It's the number four. So the greatest common factor for 8 and 12, I'm going to put it here real small. The GCF is uh, four. Now we're going to hang on to that answer because it's going to help us with the next example. All right. We may also use, what is this all leading to Mrs. Campos? Why do I have to know uh, how to find the greatest common factor or the GCF? Um, because you may use this to help you reduce fractions. Remember the lesson previous to this one, lesson 81 was about reducing fractions. And I feel like this should be taught by, uh, uh, the other way around. Right. But, um, nonetheless, it's going to help you reduce fractions. It's important to, when you reduce fractions, to look at the greatest common factor that both of the numbers have or both terms have in common. So let's look at example two. Use the GCF, greatest common factor, uh, to, of eight and 20 to reduce eight, and tw uh, eight over 20. So let's look at here. Okay, what is the greatest common factor of eight and 20? We said it's four, right? So I'm gonna use the number four, watch me as I do this, the number four to reduce this fraction. I just put a the number four over the number four to make one, and I'm gonna reduce this fraction by dividing. You ready to do it with me? Okay, let's do number one, or this, this example here. Eight divided by four is what? It's two. 20 divided by four is what? It's five. So my reduced answer, uh, my reduced answer for this would be two fifths, two fifths. Notice how easy that was to reduce that fraction by simply knowing the greatest common factor for both of those numbers. All right, now we are going to go into some lesson practice here real briefly, and let's look at lesson practice. All right, letter A, letter A, six and nine. What is, oh, sorry, let me read directions first. It helps if I could read directions. Uh, uh, on page 536, you should have your textbook there. Uh, let's read the directions together, real, will you? Find the greatest common factor, GCF, of each pair of numbers. Letter A, I'm only gonna do three with you, letter A, B, and C. Letter A, six and nine. What are the factors for six and nine? Okay, if you want to go ahead and write this out, I just wrote this on the board to kind of help you. It might not help you, it might help you. It just depends on if you want to write them out. This would help me to start off with, so that's why I'm doing this with you, all right? Um, what are the factors of six? Okay, one, very good. Two, good. Three, very good. And six, very good. What are the factors of nine? The factors of nine are one, of course, okay? Three, very good, and nine. What is the greatest common factor? And let's look at the, the factors that they have in common. They have one in common and they have three in common. So what is the greatest common factor or the largest number that both of these have in common? If you answer three, it is correct. So the GCF, uh, the GCF, sorry. Uh, the GCF uh, is three. All right. Did you get number one or letter A? Sorry, letter A. All right, let's do letter B. Six and 12. Find the greatest common factor for six and 12. Let's list the factors of six. We already listed them here. So it should help you to know already that one, two, three, and six are the factors of six. What are the factors of 12? Okay, one, two, three, four, uh, six, and 12. Okay, these both have one in common, two in common, three in common, and six in common. What is the largest number 
numbers that both of these have in common? It's the number six, you're right. The number six, so the number six is gonna be your greatest common factor for six and 12. All right, let's go to the next uh, problem here. 15 and 100. All right, the number 15, the number one, the number three, the number five, and 15 are the factors of 15, all right? The 100, you might think, whoa, 100 is a lot. Okay, let's think through here. The number one is a factor of 100. Then the number two, you can multiply two times 50 to give you 100. The number five would also be uh, five times uh, uh, five times 20. Okay, the number 10, uh, the number, let's see, 15, right? The number 20 would be a factor. Uh, the number, I think that's it, and then 100. All right, oh, I forgot 50 here, sorry. Let me erase this. 50 times two would also give me uh, uh, 100 and then 100. All right, are all those the common, are the factors? Yes, they are. All right, uh, let's see what common factors they have in common. The number one, the number five, the number 15, okay? What is the greatest common factor for 15 and 100? Um, oh, I apologize. Hold on a second. Um, I think I did something wrong. Um, 15 and 100. I just have the answer key here, but it would not be 15. 15 times, let's see, 15 times, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, 15 would not be the answer. I apologize. I'm so sorry. Um, I think Dean was up classroom to correct me here. <laughs> it's got me crazy here. So uh, it's not 15. Uh, 15 would not be the common factor. You're probably thinking, Mrs. Campos, what in the world are you saying? Well, the greatest common factor for both of these would actually be five. All right. Would actually be five. I don't know what I was thinking of 15 being a factor, but I don't think I was thinking. All right. Uh, let's look at number letter G here. Letter G, six over nine. You are going to reduce each fraction here for letter G and H to uh, 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 reduce each fraction by dividing the terms of the fraction by their greatest common factor, GCF. All right, let's look here. Six and nine, the greatest common factor for six and nine. Now I'm gonna go ahead and skip through and just circle the greatest common factor in three. All right, let's divide this fraction by three. Okay, six divided by three plus is what? Correct, two. And nine divided by three is what class? Correct, so I reduce two-thirds by finding the greatest common factor. If you get this lesson down, you will have an easy time reducing fractions as well. Let's look at uh, uh, six, uh, 6 over 12, all right? 6 twelfths. The greatest common factor for both of these is 6. So let's divide. 6 divided by 6 is 1. 12 divided by 6 is 2. So I reduce my, my fraction 6 twelfths to 1 half by finding the greatest common factor. All right, today you are gonna do numbers one through 30 for written practice, fifth grade, and you have your piece of paper there that you can do it on. Uh, so do numbers one through 30 for written practice. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I hope that you understood this lesson and that I explained it as best as possible. But again, if you have any questions that I can uh, help you with, please let me know, all right? I love you all, I miss you all, have a great day, bye-bye.